All right. So we're going to have two notebooks. And the first one is this kind of main notebook that I want to import code into. And then the second notebook that we'll create in a second is going to have some functions that we want to reuse in this code. So I go up to file and I create a new notebook. And I'm going to call it greetings. And this is just going to be a very silly example of some functions that just uh, greet people. So nothing too groundbreaking and really the code, the Python code that I'm writing isn't uh, the focus here. So let's define a function called say hello and it takes a variable called two or a parameter called two and we'll give it a default value of world so that this function can be run without any parameters at all. And we're just going to return a string, a formatted string that says hello comma, since it's a direct address, and we'll put an exclamation point so that it's very friendly. So we've defined a function called say hello, and I want to show you that it works without any inputs and that it works with um, a named parameter. And we'll just, who do we want to say hello to? I guess we'll say hello to Steve. So this works. We've got a function up here that I want to be able to reuse somewhere else. Then we have some sort of like scratch code, but we're not going to worry about that too much. Um, I want to make sure that this is saved. And we're going to go back over to that main um, notebook that we started in. So I want to be able to use Python's built-in import statement to import that greetings notebook. If I try that, what happens is we get this module not found error because we actually have no way to import that notebook because the import statement that's built into Python only works with .py files. So I need to install the Margo loader uh, library that I've written. And I can do that with pip. It's margo-loader. And I'm going to suppress the output. And it's finished. And now if I try to import greetings, uh, I'm still getting this error. And that's because I have to do one more step. I have to import margo loader. And now that I've imported Margo loader, I should be able to import the greetings module. So it, it worked. It did something. It At least it didn't give us an error. So let's see what happens when I take a look at what's in greetings. And we've got some of this you know, boilerplate stuff that's in every Python module. And then I've got this thing called say hello. So if I do greetings dot say hello, it says hello world. So just to make sure that, um, let's see, let's see that it, that it takes um, an input. We'll go say hello to Sam. And it says hello to Sam. Now, you could think that perhaps I've done some magic behind the scenes, and I actually wrote a plain old .py file, and I'm just trying to trick you. So let's modify this function so that it doesn't have an exclamation at the end. And we'll save this module. And now, if I rerun this entire notebook, we should get a different output. So I'm going to skip these cells that we know um, will just cause errors and get down to the good part. So I start by importing Largo Loader. I import greetings. I don't need to do this directory, this dir um, on greetings again. I call greetings and say hello. And we see that there's no longer an exclamation point. So it is indeed pulling from this uh, greetings notebook. So that's great. Um, but we don't want to, to run this code every time 
um, we import. So when I imported greetings, we actually didn't see this hello world message, um, but it actually is running. It's just that because it runs a string or because it returns a string, it doesn't do anything with it. It doesn't get printed from during import. So if we had, so I want to show that that these cells are actually running when I um, try to import. They didn't run. So okay, so here we go. When I import Margo Loader and I import greetings, we immediately print hello world and hello Steve. So every time I import this notebook into this other notebook, um, I'm going to have that problem. And if these examples were not just like lightweight throwaway print to string functions, but instead they did something very time consuming, then they would run every time I imported them and that could take quite a while. So like, I'm gonna prove that that's true. So, but slowly, I'm gonna make a function called say hello, but slowly. And first I'm going to need to import the time module and see if I can remember the syntax off the top of my head. I'm going to take a parameter and um, time dot sleep and I'm going to sleep for five seconds, which should be long enough for us to see that lag. And then I'm going to return uh, say hello to equals two. So I'm actually just going to call the real say hello function. So if I run it here, say hello, but slowly, and I'm going to say hello to Jane, and I'm going to print the output so that it shows up in that main function, in that main notebook. So we see here that it's taking a while to run. It's taking five seconds, which in computer terms kind of feels like an eternity. So I want you to imagine that instead of just doing this silly thing, this is some code that actually is useful, but takes a really long time to run. Um, so I'm going to restart the kernel, and I'm going to clear the output. I always start out with importing Margo loader. I import greetings, and it's we see that it's, it's lagging when on the import, and it just finished. So, and then it printed all three of these outputs, and then I can again, of course, call say hello. And I can call greetings dot say hello, uh, but slowly to uh, let's see who should I say hello to? Um, I'll say hello to Aline. And again, just to reemphasize this point, it took quite a while to run that function. We we want to keep this function accessible to us in this notebook, but we don't want to run it when we first import the, um, the module. And we don't want to imp run, run it with these like values that have no context in this new main notebook. So the way we do this in Margo is we, we put what are called margin notes. So margin notes are just regular code comments. And then they have a space after the uh, pound sign and then two colons. And the first directive that I want to give it is ignore cell. And what this does is it tells Margo loader to ignore this cell when we are importing. And I want to ignore this cell. And I want to ignore this cell down here. So you can see that the only two cells that we haven't ignored are the say hello function definition and the say hello but slowly function definition. So I'm going to save my notebook and I'm going to clear my outputs again and restart. 
I'm going to import Margot Loader. I'm going to import Greetings. And remember, this took uh, five seconds last time. It took a little bit that time, and I just noticed the problem. I forgot this double colon, so this ignore cell statement had no effect. So I'm going to save my notebook again, and I'm going to restart and clear my outputs. Import Margo Loader, and we want this greetings function, this import greetings, um, to happen very quickly. So it did that time, and it didn't print any output either because we totally ignored those cells. You can ignore these cells one at a time, but if you had a, a bunch of cells in a row that all um, were part of this like example code that you didn't want to to um, include in your module. There's a handy way to exclude all of these cells at once. So first, I'm just going to show you that I've I've got all of these cells that kind of do this like worthless computation. It's useful for this notebook to run all of these cells, but it's not useful on this importing notebook to run all of these cells. So I could go ahead and I could type ignore cell over and over, or maybe if I was smart, I could copy and paste, but I'm pretty lazy, so I really just want to say stop module. So what that does is it tells Margo Loader that from this cell down, just ignore all of the cells in the notebook. So if I save and I rerun this notebook, what's going to happen is I'm going to get an error because say hello but slowly um, is not defined because I ignored all of the cells from cell two down. So what I really want to do is restart the module here and save the notebook. So restarting the module has this code, but I see that I've forgotten the two colons at the end. So I put those in and save it again. Now, if I restart and run this, it works fine. If the first cell in a notebook is a markdown cell, it's going to be treated differently. It's going to be treated as the documentation for this module. So I'm going to say that this module defines two functions, say hello to um, and it takes a string and it says hello to anyone you want to greet. And then say hello, but slowly takes a to string. Oh, and in Python they're called stirs, not strings. So say hello, but wait a few seconds first. So I've written this like look this like very bad documentation of this module. So now I go over here and I restart and I run again and it, it takes five seconds to run this hello but slowly and here we are. So Nothing has changed in the output here, but now that we've defined that um, that first cell, 
we can see that the code is being used as the description for the module. So this help function is uh, built into Python. And what it looks for under the hood, uh, we'll just go a little deeper than we need to here for a second. What it looks for under the hood is a thing called a doc string. And every module has one. And it's just this like ugly chunk of code. But if we look at it, I'll print it out so it looks a little prettier. Um, we can see that this is word for word, character for character, the contents of this markdown cell. Now, that kind of concludes our tutorial on how to use Jupyter Notebooks as Python modules. But Margo is actually useful for a lot of other things because in addition to creating these like one word um, directives, we can also assign values to these directives. And then we call them assignments, not directives. So I could, oops, my kernel died. So we'll see in another tutorial, but we can, um, we can define a, a list of values to a name. So if I want to tell some other program something about this Jupyter Notebook, I can say um, input inputs equals uh, population.csv and um, infections.csv. So this might be useful in an example where in order to run this notebook, um, there are these required files that must be on the file system. And we could say outputs equals uh, report.csv and uh, chart.png. So this type of data serialization can be pretty useful. And we'll see how that could be used with something like GNU Make um, in another tutorial that uh, hopefully I'll get a chance to make soon. But if you want to learn, if you just want to be able to use your Jupyter Notebooks as modules, just go ahead and pip install Margo Loader. And um, that's all there is to it, really. So thanks for watching.